This is the Ragitech Orcus 240. It's a pretty interesting and very unique all-in-one water cooler. We're going to take a look at it, so do stick around. So let's start off with what's in the box. You get the cooler itself, two RGB 120mm fans. Of the mounting hardware, you'll need to mount this on any uh, Intel and AMD chipset or socket that you need. And actually, surprisingly, a bottle of distilled water for any top-ups you might need. You do also get an RGB hub included with an RF remote, although the most interesting thing about the hub, despite the fact that it has, I think, eight or nine uh, plus connections, is that the uh, hub allows you to either connect to your motherboard with what seems like a proprietary cable that wouldn't work with most motherboards as far as un un I understand it, and an RF remote with a toggle switch that allows you to switch between the two. The most interesting thing about the remote is that while it comes with a small slip uh, that allows you to remove it and connect the battery, there was no battery in this remote, so I had to use another uh, sort of watch battery style uh, from my uh, other RGB remotes to be able to get this working. Now the main unique feature for this cooler is that it actually has an external pump. Normally with your Corsairs, your Coolmasters, your Acasas, your Be Quiets, and all, basically all other all-in-one water coolers, it is a pump block combo where the pump is attached to the CPU block. With this one, it actually has an external pump that's not even connected to the radiator like EK's solution, but is just connected to the tubing a little bit, uh, actually not that far away from the radiator. The block itself, despite not having a pump in it, is bigger than most blocks I've seen on basically any liquid coolers. It is a massive thing. It's pretty tall. It's pretty wide. It's pretty thick as well. So it's kind of a, an interesting design. They have a uh, sort of water wheel or a flow meter inside that for me actually didn't end up spinning while I was using it. I don't know whether it's actually meant to or not, but it is a a free spinning uh, kind of free moving object inside the pump that I think is meant to spin but either way point is it's a kind of an interesting design. The external pump is as I mentioned connected to the tubing it does look like while it's physically connected to both tubes with a plastic bracket it looks like it's only interacting with one of the tubes which is kind of what you'd expect uh, for the sort of pump system in most water cooling and otherwise this does look like a pretty custom radiator as the fittings are pretty centralized in onto the radiator as opposed to pretty far out, which is how you'll see most, uh, you know, all-in-one water coolers. Another thing you mentioned is that there is also a very small fill port on the radiator as well. There is also a larger G1 quarter fitting uh, fill port on the side of the pump if you do want to top it up with the supplied extra water. I guess this is meant to be for extra longevity, which is kind of cool to see, although, as I said, it's a bit of an interesting design and we'll speak about temperatures and performance in just a second. Now, of course, we have to talk about the installation process and this was fairly simple, it's fairly decent. So you basically attach the back plate to the motherboard with a couple of relatively unrefined uh, bolts and uh, nuts, and then you attach the retention bracket to that. You then attach the pump uh, onto that bracket with two, uh, for the two screws through the plastic housing, and it does a pretty good uh, job at being fairly tight and uh, retented fairly well. So I'm not too worried about the retention methods, but of course it is a little bit more cumbersome and a little bit tricky trickier and a, a bit more, a few more steps than say your Cooler Master or Corsair uh, mounting solutions. Aesthetically, once you get it in, connect your uh, RGB controller up and plug everything in, it does look pretty cool. Although I would mention that the pump is an extra thing that's kind of just uh, connected to the cables and looks a little bit strange. And especially if you mount it the way that I have, it just looks like a weird plastic lump rather than at least the uh, Ragentech logo. And I would mention that the block itself does look pretty uh, plasticky and does look a little bit on the sort of uh, cheaper, tackier side than some of the other pump blocks that we've seen. Moving on to performance, this is where I was actually quite surprised. I thought that having an external pump would mean you get better flow throughout the system and therefore in theory you would get better performance, but I actually found that this performs worse than an H100i V2 or even a Cooler Master or Master Liquid 240. The reason that I'm saying this is that I was using a 7700K as you can see in the build next to me and while that is a bit of a sort of thermally um, interesting chip, the, the main sort of uh, factor that you would notice here is that the chip is actually thermally throttling one when, uh, when running Prime 95 on full load. Now, of course full 100% load on all cores isn't necessarily uh, real world uh, testing but it does give you an idea of how well the cooler can you know evaporate the heat or take the heat away from the CPU 
GPU and allow it to at least stay at its high temperatures but at the full core speed. Now the chip wasn't throttling much, it was basically just not hitting its full 4.5 gigahertz boost clock and sitting somewhere between 4.2 and 4.4 gigahertz most of the time, occasionally hitting 4.5 but then bringing itself back down again. This isn't too much of a problem, you likely wouldn't see a massive difference, but for a cooler that you're going to pay a fairly decent amount of money for, I don't know that I can necessarily recommend it over the other options that are available. So now you have an understanding of the cooler itself, the performance, the styling, all that sort of stuff, and I want to give you my thoughts on it. For me, this kind of misses the mark with what an all-in-one water cooler should be. It's nice to see some customizability and especially uh, sort of longevity in terms of extra fluid being available to you, but at the same time, the fact that you have that external pump which adds even more clutter to the system, you also have a lot of wires for both the fans and the RGB side of things. And also just having such a large pump unit for some our, uh, block that uh, doesn't even have a pump in it, for me is just a little bit of a kind of downside to what otherwise is a kind of interesting and certainly unique product. I feel like for most people the benefit of getting an all-in-one water cooler is it is a slim-lined, easy to install and generally good looking but simple system that you don't have to think about maintaining, you don't have to think about where, you know, where the pump is and having extra cables to plug stuff in and also just having a nice sleek and simple solution. With this one you're adding extra bulk in terms of a pump that's connected to the cables. It doesn't look that visually appealing, especially that uh, uh, block unit personally. And for me it's a little bit of a sort of an interesting one. I don't know, as I said, I can personally recommend. Moving on to the scoring for me, I think this is going to be a 3 for 5 for money. It's also going to be a 3 for performance, and I think in terms of functionality, it is actually pretty impressive. The RGB is nice enough, although I don't think you can actually connect it to most motherboards, and I would also mention that the pump is ridiculously quiet, but the fans weren't. For me, that makes uh, means it's going to be a 3.5 functionality, and I think a 3 for styling, with a Titan BB score of a 3 as well. It's kind of an interesting cooler. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you someone who'd be interested in having an external pump unit but not built into the radiator and not actually customizable in, you know, like you, you could get the EKA 240G kit um, where you can actually like do a full custom loop. I'd, lo I'd love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments down below. So with that said, if you want to check out the cooler, feel free to take a look at the link in the description down below to Overclocks UK. And if you want to support the channel and help me make these videos on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis you can either subscribe if you're new to the channel or if you want to support me directly you can check out the patreon link in the description down below as well there's also an amazon and overclockers uk affiliate links down there too which can slightly less directly help me but still massively help me out and also there will be some other videos over here for you to check out other than that thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video